What up YouTube, if you guys think that Conan is the master of late night and a living legend <laughs> You've come to the right place <laughs> Also Oh look, it's a ginger Frankenstein I, 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 you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, exactly what you mean. Again, you've come to the right place. So make sure to like, sub, and comment if you want more videos like this, and click on the bell for notifications below. So without further ado, let's talk about Conan O'Brien. So much potential, and you've resorted to fantasizing about Conan Ginger Junk O'Brien. He is funny. He looks like a carrot. Late night is a subject that I and many other people can talk about for ages. What works, what doesn't, what downright makes it great, or you know, whatever Jimmy Fallon is. <laughs> yes! That's it! Yes. That is it, you described it. It's, it, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need you to hump the desk every time someone takes a breath, Jimmy. This is not SNL where people found it adorable. This is broadcast television. Sh just grow up. And then I stood there for 45 minutes. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of videos discussing the intricacies and fundamentals of late night and again, what works, what doesn't work. But the only host that continues to surprise and cease to amaze me even to this day is Conan O'Brien one of the best creations that we have ever gotten as a society ever pam is very attractive no question i mean if i didn't have an award show to host i could easily see having two or three seasons of will they won't they sexual tension that ultimately goes nowhere almost 30 years after becoming the new guy in late night tv conan is closing that late night chapter of his life and while his long really strange odyssey made out better than fine that doesn't mean the red haired ginger slender man had a ride that hasn't been such a roller coaster conan is the hero of late night to me because he pushes things forward and unintentionally subverts the late night formula but before i talk about why conan is the best TV host that we've ever had. Let's go a little back, shall we? I shall not. Yes, sir. you will. <laughs> no. Oklahoma, where the wind comes streaming down the train, <laughs> and the rain wait, it tore smells sweet out. Conan Christopher O'Brien was born on April 18th, 1963, in Brookline, Massachusetts. He was born in an Irish Catholic family and looked like this for the majority of his childhood and adulthood. Okay, no, he went a little too far far back, let's be professional for once, shall we? I shall not. After writing for several comedy shows in Los Angeles, he joined the writing staff of SNL with get this, Robert Smigel and Bob Odenkirk, which is like an all-star team, I'll tell you that much. Then in 1991, O'Brien was a writer and producer for this very up-and-coming show that you may or may not have heard of. It's called The Simpsons. Check this show out, it's on Sundays on Fox. <laughs> for about two seasons making some of the best episodes of the show that you'll ever see, like the monorail episode. Hi, Homer! Oh, I hate that sound. You mean the world to me, Conrad. It's Conan. Conan? <laughs> that is until he was commissioned by NBC to take over Letterman's position as the host of The Late Night Show in 1993. At first, I'm not gonna lie, I thought he was really awkward. Like if you see the first episode on YouTube, the dude looks like he's about to erupt in any second. Something's wrong. Something's really wrong. <laughs> no, I'm fine, really. I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> Wow, this is a disaster. <laughs> but having a complete unknown like O'Brien at first felt like such a huge mistake, and in the first few years, it really seemed like it was. The ratings were very low, critics seemed to dislike how really giddy and shaky he was. But then, just as David Letterman showed up in his show, it was not only a morale boost, Conan would say, but it was almost instantly making the show evolve to what it became now. Uh, I came here to to 30 Rock. How I mean, did you get this job, by the way? <laughs> was, it a, was it a theme writing contest? Or yes. 
Yes. Yeah. It was a what would I do with a talk show, and I was fourth. Uh, <laughs> I feel like in the beginning, due to him being such an unknown and just him being a TV writer at the time and not really having much of a background, he didn't really know what made him truly special. Banter between him and Andy improved, his sketches became more worldwide and hilarious, his hair became more of a symbol to all the redheads out there who are really a dying breed. Tissues have souls! <laughs> and Kona's comedic performance naturally grew into becoming the comedy icon he is today. One of my all-time favorite recurring bits featured from the late night show was a pre-Saturday Night Live Amy Poehler in the audience playing Andy Richter's little sister named Stacy. Your words are cruel and they feel like shrapnel piercing my already broken heart, but deep within my heart lies an army. An elegant and fiercely brave infantry of hate! Who is just obsessed with Conan in almost every sketch ends with an enraged Polar charging onto the stage to beat up Andy and pouncing on Conan. It was always these characters, sketches, and moments that made Conan stand out from his counterparts like David Letterman. But it wasn't just the bits, Conan himself became such a comedic star. In 2009, he ended his late night show to go to the best place for late night TV for the past decades, and that's The Tonight Show. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Congratulations, Conan, on finally securing your place as permanent host of The Tonight Show. <laughs> That's something they can never take away from him. And no, I'm not gonna go into full detail because I kinda wanna talk about it in the future, but the basis of the entire conflict was that Jay the Jaw Leno was leaving The Tonight Show, Conan was set to take over The Tonight Show. Then, after retiring, Jay was like, eh, I still wanna be on TV, so they pushed Conan's Tonight Show to put Jay on before him. Conan didn't really like that, so they kicked him out, and then Jay got back his Tonight Show. Isn't that like giving your child a birthday present, then let him play with it for a while for let's say seven months or so? And then you tell the kid that you have to refund the present because he needs the cash? And then you keep the present for yourself? You can do anything you want in life. Yeah. Yeah, unless Jay Leno wants to do it too. <laughs> Finally, he'll blame something on someone other than Jay. <laughs> and who's your final guest? I'm assuming it's Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? He doesn't answer. Someone is always like, hey, he's not here right now. But honestly, I personally think what Conan did after that, though, is maybe the best way to handle it. What he did was that he went on a tour called the Legally Prohibited From Being Funny on Television Tour. Such an ironic title. Made an excellent documentary called Conan O'Brien Can't Stop that I highly recommend you guys to watch if you haven't seen it yet, and then went on TBS, a channel that I have never heard of in my entire life until I knew that Conan was on that platform. And here we are. After 28 years, Conan O'Brien ends his TBS show and says farewell to late night. Conan to me was like my Johnny Carson, or David Letterman, or my Craig Ferguson, or my Lily Singh. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same. To me, one of the many things that made him so endearing to audiences, and to me anyway, is his ability to be so self-deprecating. While David Letterman took on the role of that sort of smug type character, and Jay Leno played it bland, and Jimmy Fallon played it like that giggle sister he always is. <laughs> Conan leaned into his geeky, lanky, awkward, kinda creepy vibe in the absolute best way possible. Hey. Hey how's, there. How's it going? Going gr Are you a guy or a girl right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But however, along with the self-deprecation and the common genius, there is a sincerity to Conan. At the most difficult time of his career, O'Brien graciously showed gratitude for his 20 years of the network, otherwise known as NBC, which stands for... Nobody backs Conan! <laughs> But after all the chaos and conflict and resentment and anger that he obviously has over NBC, he left fans with advice like this. And all I ask is one thing, and this is, I'm asking this particularly of young people that watch, please do not be cynical. I hate cynicism. For the record, it's my least favorite quality. It doesn't lead anywhere. Nobody in life gets exactly what they thought they were going to get. But if you work really hard and you're kind, amazing things will happen. Conan is the hero of late night because he pushed things forward and the podcast is a great example of that. It feels very significant that someone as talented as Conan who's been in this very, very stale late night format for around three decades. And not only does he try to change it up a bit, but he also puts in the time to do this podcast, this amazing podcast with less of the artificial conversations online because he's just tired of all the fake and wants more real and genuine conversations, which I really admire. I'm sorry, I have my plots and schemes and then um, it's very good. They always bring lawyers in to explain to me that I can't do that, that that hasn't been, most of what I want to do to the staff hasn't been legal since 1840. <laughs> <laughs> That's because late night TV is a fantasy, a fantasy of sophistication and charm and fun, a standard to which after enough time we hold ourselves unwittingly. And that age is dead now. We're in the age of the internet and I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but late night is actually fake. I'm sorry, stock sound effect, but it just is. And the only host to be tired of the format and wants to change and evolve with the society we live in is Conan Ginger Junk O'Brien, ladies and gentlemen. I, see. I uh, entertain uh, hundreds of people. Hundreds? I thought that's. Millions of people. No, millions watch, but hundreds are entertained. Oh. In my opinion, Conan clearly is just the single funniest host. Conan always makes the joke on him. He's the butt of the joke. He is always the loser. I love you. <laughs> Don't be creepy. <laughs> And when he isn't making fun of himself, he makes fun of other people to make himself look better like Sona. Creepy. I think you were not a little creepy, I think you were very creepy. Is there an Armenian word for that? We can make one, yeah. call it Conan. <laughs> <laughs> or Jordan Schlansky, easily one of the best. Just the best. He's so great. <laughs> yourself as a sophisticated and academic, you know, an intellect, and you're a fool. I mean, this is like, uh, this is like toddler humor. It looks like you were digitally manipulated, like you were a skinny guy playing a fat guy in the movie and they digitally stretched your face. You look great now. I'm just saying in 2002, you were disgusting. Just look at the tape. Why do you have these? They were sent to me. By who? By a woman that I know. A woman sent you these? Correct. The very definition of having this is proof that you don't know a woman. Conan just felt like the most authentic host to me. And now we're stuck with this, these very mediocre comedians that not only have to stick to the blandest comedy out there to not offend people that will be offended due to how bland the comedy is anyway, along with this very, very cheap political comedy just to get a few pity laughs. Dad, dad. <laughs> Dad, 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 dad. Conan is actually genuine and never fails to make me laugh in every minute of his shows because he's not just giving us dated and cheap political commentary. What makes Conan O'Brien so special wasn't just his interactions with, you know, celebrities, but his remotes. Conan's remotes are just famous for being masterpieces. When he's just out in the world or out in his office, his ability to make co-workers and 
strangers laugh at just uncontrollably and connect with him is naturally hilarious. But even his celebrity interviews are great, believe it or not, talk show interviews are actually an art form on their own. In terms of, you know, host guest chemistry and not doing what's accepted, Craig Ferguson was actually the best at that, where he not only tore up the blue cards that you actually see as notes in every late night show. The pre-interview means nothing. It means nothing, it's meaningless. The pre-interview is a formality nothing. like wearing a tie or underpants. Yeah. <laughs> But the idea of having such an off-the-wall conversation and kind of feeling like you're there having a nice chat with a friend leads to some of the best and funniest moments in late night history. Shall I tell a joke, a punchline of a joke that just falls flat and everyone just goes quiet and it just fades out? No, we did that in the monologue. Okay. <laughs> But with Conan, even though it is staged most of the time, if he has a stand-up comedian, he doesn't interrupt or steamroll them with questions or make it about him. He just lets them do their work and enjoys their work, which makes the viewers themselves enjoy their work all the more. I saw like a really overweight guy in a Superman outfit <laughs> waiting for the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Just really, he yeah. has none of Superman's powers, clearly. The reality was his kryptonite. <laughs> I, got, I'm, I got a picture of you. Pull it up. Where's that? Wait, don't show a pic. Oh, God. <laughs> Look yes, at we... that overbite. <laughs> I don't know what's real and what's not anymore. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Take Tracy Morgan, one of the funniest people you will ever know. Seriously, this guy is incredible. Whenever he's on a talk show, he is really unpredictable and so spontaneous, and I just, I love him for that. This is the stupidest in... <laughs> But when I see him in other talk shows like Colbert, for example, it's just, it's less enjoyable because not only is Colbert such a terrible, terrible interviewer in terms of celebrities, that is, but he's just literally deconstructing every piece of inevitable comedy that's coming out from Tracy's mouth. So that kept the bullies off my back. It was either that or cooked them hot dogs upstairs. I don't understand that part. What do you mean cooking the hot dogs and the cheeseburgers? For the bullies? Yeah, for the bullies. Y'all want to go, don't, don't beat me up. Come upstairs and eat some hot dogs and pork and beans. That's a I really make unique like response to bullies. I've never yeah. heard that before. True grit. So they would run out, let me see if I can figure this out. But Conan, due to him being such a great interviewer, gives Tracy the perfect amount of space and lets him be himself because he knows that if he intervenes, he's kind of butchering every ounce of enjoyment that we as an audience have. You my friend. Thank you. You know, you cry, I cry. What? You laugh, I laugh. Uh -huh. You jump off a bridge, you buy your damn self. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of the way Conan does his interviews, it really depends on how it's done. Sometimes the guest is sort of taking control of the interview and Conan is played as sort of the straight man. I watched him on the Olympics. Uh -huh. I watched him on Chips. I watched him on that horrible show my wife watched where he just walks around in the background. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, now I have a question for you. Please, I have an answer for you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know what, Conan? Um, here's the deal. I'm, I'm happy to come on your show, and I'm, I'm happy to talk about the movie, uh, Get Hard. I'm happy to talk about, you know, anything. But I don't want to talk about my personal life, okay? <laughs> And sometimes it's Conan taking full control and getting all the laughs. And I grabbed her by the collar, and I said, if you don't shut up. <laughs> I'm sending you home right now, tonight, in the middle of the night, and it's like 2 a.m., and, uh, and she started to cry, and I felt good. But yes, I suppose, I, well, you know, I have an interest in 
Uh, many things. Hands, yes. I, I, I probably had interest in <laughs> There's no one like him! America! But honestly, this is one of the things that Conan did best, which was creating moments with the guests by playing to their personalities and running with the moment by being a strong listener and trying to be as real as possible. Instead of just, you know, phoning it in like Fallon or only thinking about the next question like Colbert. I'm not saying my other, my compatriots are in the dark ages, but, <laughs> well, <laughs> come on, do the math, you know what I'm saying? What Conan does is he uses this opportunity to create new comedy, experiment, and showcase their personalities and why you should be watching them. <laughs> it's Conan! It's in the title of the show, yeah. Conan! It's Conan? Yes! All these years I thought it was Kevin O'Brien. Right. You're such a, such well, a that's... bad guy. Will, what sense. kind of name is that? Oh, yeah. It's an Irish name, an old Celtic name. But let's not talk Great about story. me. Let's talk oh. about... <laughs> like, for example, when Kumail Nanjiani didn't show up because he had to shoot Silicon Valley, Conan, without any hesitation whatsoever, used that as an opportunity and basically had an entire episode improvised without any rehearsal whatsoever like it was some sort of Craig Ferguson sketch with the guest actually being surprisingly Sona. Can you buy me a house? Uh... <laughs> Well, the answer is yes, I can buy you a house. <laughs> and it's probably one of my favorite episodes, mainly due to, you know, that none of this was staged and all of this was just Conan being Conan. But when you're a show that's based on just interviewing one guest and that guest doesn't show up, you're really screwed. <laughs> Or another example is when Dwayne The Rock Johnson was midway through his story of him playing Hercules and blacking out. Both Conan and Andy so cleverly and so brilliantly made such a hysterical and organic segment and The Rock was also laughing along which made it even better. Seriously, that dude has such a great sense of humor about himself but I'm still shocked that even to this day this was all improv. I'm Hercules! <laughs> Hercules! 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 <laughs> Where am I? Oh, goodness! Again, I am... Oh, here we go! <laughs> it genuinely felt like one of those scraps that the Team Coco channel would sometimes post online, you know? The ones where they would just be goofing off in rehearsal. <laughs> or other great interviews, you know, with uh, Nathan Fielder, for example, and the whole idea of a backup guest. Susan, do you have pets? Well, why, well, why, are, you, why are you talking to her? You're only supposed to talk to her if the story's not going well, but I thought it was, right? No, it was going pretty well. I think you said, that, yeah, sometimes your cat swipes at you. Or when Martin Short tirelessly just consistently insults Conan. I would love to do this show way more often, but you know, pride. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even know that there was an audience. I'd heard the monologue, but you know. <laughs> Dude. And uh, <laughs> wow, I love when you use language. I always do. Or Paul Rudd. Who, in my opinion, is the perfect personification of Lucy pulling the football away as Charlie Brown goes to kick it? It's time I'm gonna kick that football clear to the moon! Ah! Okay, that is the last time you were gonna pull that crap! <laughs> it's this brilliant performance art of showing this clip from this really bizarre yet really terrible and hilarious McDonald's movie called Mac and Me and that's been going on for 20 years and I'll tell you it never gets old it really doesn't I suppose if you're gonna set up a clip it's probably best not to just say the whole clip before you, <laughs> before you play it 
<laughs> and the fact that he returned in the last two weeks of the show to pull the same crap, which was not only brilliantly executed by Conan and Hater, but it was just so effortless, like... After all the times I was tricked into thinking this was a real clip gonna be shown, this was the most clever one. I'm genuinely serious. So you can see why it bombed. <laughs> I mean, this is quality content. And now we got these current hosts that seem to roll around in the fun and glamour of having a late night talk show and that's it. And they do nothing but that and just miss all the opportunities to push against it and have some actual genuine laughs. Like if Joaquin Phoenix, who is infamously known for having some of the most uncomfortable interviews ever. Welcome back uh, to an all new boring tonight show. <laughs> all right, number two. You I th I think that I said no. It's not that what you said. Did I say these things or are they true or? <laughs> Sorry. I feel like it's a, you you've gone you've gone nuts. Can actually feel comfortable and have a conversation with Conan is something to really behold. Thanks for being here. Great to be here. What did you? Say? Also, Conan deserves so much praise for Andy Richter, who not only elevates the sketch or a celebrity interview. Stay away from my wife. Uh, <laughs> it's not, it's it's not a threat, it's more of a request. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've been forever with young Emily. But if I were to, if I were to make myself... <laughs> That's the kind of way you talk when young Emily is locked in the attic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bastille is here. We love Bastille, don't mm, we? Sure do. Great band. <laughs> we... Andy Richter is low-key one of the wittiest people ever to be on TV. His comments are always perfectly timed. He never pulls too much focus from what's going on and are often, if not always, the funniest thing said in the show. Like a good example is when he unintentionally <laughs> breaks I, I the couch. You. Oh, I think I, I just got... broke the couch. You just broke the couch! Show or when Jake Gyllenhaal was on the show and he was talking about toilets, which doesn't sound like much, but it's actually really funny, I promise. When you said, where's my fancy toilet, I was about to say, you have a show. Yeah. Uh, but no, I was like... <laughs> and there was one single moment where Gyllenhaal was sort of stuttering a little bit and the first thought out of my head was like, Oh my god, he kind of sounds like Porky Pig. Uh, it is, it is, it is, it, 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 it is a bid, bidet. A bidet? It is a bidet. I wasn't going to say a you're bidet. So, you're so it's excited a, about this toilet, I you can't, can't even talk about yeah. it. It's a and Andy, sure enough. Porky yeah. Pig bidet. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it has it 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 it, it has a, s s a seat. <laughs> yeah, I had that on a loop. I have never laughed harder in my life. But Andy doesn't really feel like the sidekick a lot of the times, but more or less the underrated secret weapon that sets this show apart from all the other late night shows. And in my opinion, I think Andy has the best job in show business. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love to be a host for any show, you know, bossing people around for a living, you know, getting to talk to celebrities, getting paid to be funny, it's never gonna happen because I don't have the funny part, but still, it's, it's a lifelong dream. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But if you don't have that option, but still get to sit right next to A-list celebrities and participate on some of these weird yet hilarious sketches and make a phenomenal joke once in a while that will usually make the said celebrities laugh and also make the audience laugh, I mean, come on! Do you, do you float a lot in the ocean? <laughs> sure. What, do you sink? It might be that cast iron heart. <laughs> and speaking of laughing very quickly, there are a lot of celebrities where I just love to hear them laugh, like Ricky Gervais, or Bill Hader, or Seth Rogen, or Janice from Friends. Conan has one of the most contagious laughs in the world to me. Ted Bundy called me and... <laughs> 
guys, here's the thing, when you make, <laughs> this, this is what we live for. When you can make somebody like Conan legitimately laugh, this is like, honestly, this is what you live time. for. It's been so long since you did that, yeah. I mean, people never forget. <laughs> Whenever I hear him laugh, I don't get angry like I do with, you know, Jimmy Fallon or feel really depressed with Stephen Colbert because he barely does laugh. Like, man, talk about really, really harsh hospitality. But with my man Coco, I just feel such joy, such real, genuine, sincere joy that to me always elevates an interview, a sketch, a remote, his podcast, whatever. I just love hearing Conan's laugh. It always gets me in such a good mood as does everything he does. She said, if, if I, could, I could have a guy with, and she referenced to me, with your looks, and then she looked at you and said, and your brain. <laughs> I want to say there's a reason that I never adopted you legally. <laughs> but uh, what's your name? Connor. No, you're no, it isn't. It's not really. Oh my god. But honestly, a lot of strengths of what makes Conan's show so special to me was also the writing. He says in the finale that he's always said that he was striving for the thin intersectional line between smart and stupid, always genuine and thoughtful, yet at the same time also not taking himself too seriously. And he's done this by emphasizing several aspects of classic comedy. Everybody knows that pretty much all comedy comes from a form of misery. So you always have to address something somewhat unpleasant to get a laugh. This could be literally any subject whatsoever and it still mirrors some sort of painful situation. Comedy should provoke. It should blast through prejudices, challenge preconceptions. Comedy should always leave you different than when it found you. Sure, humor can hurt, even alienate. But the risk is better than the alternative. Demand to be challenged, to be offended, to be treated like thinking, reasoning adults. Conan has come such a long way from the 30-year-old complete unknown plucked out of The Simpsons and SNL writer's room to becoming a late-night talk show host and such a cultural icon. Whatever he does, he always has the charisma to make people laugh, and to me, that's the single reason why Conan is easily the best thing to happen to comedy. Can you imagine Kimmel, Fallon, Colbert, or even David Letterman going out and interacting with the public like Conan? Yeah, right. I mean, at best, I think they would make humor about the foreign world around them and find something to point at versus how Conan manages to make the world point at him. But even internationally, it seems like everybody loves Conan. He's just universally adored because he just has this universal feel to him. No one out there does smart and stupid like him. He mastered it. Watching the finale was probably the the hardest thing I had to watch. Not only was Jack Black such a phenomenal last guest, I mean, at first it was kind of a weird choice to end your show with, but seeing him sing from the bottom of his heart and throwing this fantastic musical number and get this, while having an injured leg, crazy enough, it was due to them actually planning a bit which really sounded like this big showstopper, which is such a Conan ending, you know? But what's really funny to me is that this is all we needed, just a great musician and comic like Jack Black telling Conan that he, he did it his way. He wore Letterman's crown and added the biggest diamond on that crown. And then, right after one of the greatest moments in television history, we get Conan saying farewell to Late Night. And when many people reflect on their career, they usually focus on their accomplishments, but Conan seems to focus on all of the people who helped him and who aren't even in front of a camera. He thanked everyone on his way out, praised others before himself. 
such a true class act. I don't think there's any better evidence to point to about his character, not as a celebrity, but as a human being, a very wonderful human being who gives us so much joy in our lives. This is how a late night show should end. But I will say one thing that bothered me a little bit about his last moment. Conan is so wrong about his show being pointless. When I have had personal tragedies or dark times or just an overall bad mood, I have often watched Conan clips or episodes as a temporary escape and they really really do help me. I really doubt that Conan or his staff will see this, but if by any chance they do, thank you so much for the laughter you have brought to us all over the years. And I, I know a lot of people tell you this, but it has meant more than you may ever think. It was like the show's strange and really off-brand humor was speaking directly to me. Conan inspired me in so many ways, and this may be the end for Late Night Conan, but it's not the end for Conan, but the beginning of a doorway to a new chapter. I mean, check out the people that claim him as such a huge influence in their lives, like John Krasinski, Mindy Kaling, Seth Meyers, Nikki Glaser, John Mulaney, Bill Hader, Eric Andre, Sarah Silverman, these very funny and talented people. Most people know that Conan, being the only actual funny talk show host nowadays, which is very, very true, but something I love Conan for really is his passion. When I watch Conan, I see him as my pal, you know, such a lovable goofball. He feels like a person, unlike other talk show hosts that feel like such robotic zombies. You're a tycoon. You know who else is a tycoon? Is Donald Trump. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Hey, hey, funny guy! I got a joke for you! What smells rotten? and puts people to sleep. And while the others still remain as late night hosts on network television, Conan's departure does mark somewhat of a beginning of the end of traditional late night shows. That's why his lesson was, please do not be cynical. I hate cynicism. For the record, it's my least favorite quality. It doesn't lead anywhere. Nobody in life gets exactly what they thought they were going to get. But if you work really hard and you're kind, amazing things will happen. And lo and behold, TBS gave him that opportunity. And he learned in those 11 wonderful and hysterical years, it doesn't matter where you are. What matters is doing what you love with the people you love. And you can really hear the happiness in his voice when he says those words. Although he will return with a weekly variety series on HBO Max sometime in 2022, which I'm really, really looking forward to, this still marks the end of an era and feels like I'm saying goodbye to a great friend with such weird red hair. Don't get me wrong, there have been a lot of great late night guys out there, but none have ever been and never will be like Conan O'Brien. So anyway, thank you guys for watching, like, sub, and comment. 
follow my insta it's username with two s's and i'll see you guys in the next one happy travels coco you beautiful ginger so uh my advice to anyone uh watching right now and it's not easy to do it is not easy to do it's not easy to do but try try and do what you love with people you love and if you can manage that it's the definition of heaven on earth i swear to god it really is so good night thank you very much on the road again i just can't wait to get on the road again the life i love is making music with my friends i can't wait to get on the road again on the road again we're going places that we've never been we're seeing things that we may never see again i can't wait to get on the road again Yeehaw! Like a band of gypsies, we go down.